If you're anything like me, you probably get a lot of enjoyment and satisfaction out of software development. Although there's a bunch of bits that are tedious, boring, monotonous, that you'd rather skip over. Those are the things that we can and should outsource to AI tools. So today I'm gonna to be going through some of the ways that I use AI tools as a software engineer to make my daily life easier. There is a caveat to today's video, you will get better results if you're using one of the paid AI products out there. I'm gonna be using the free version of Google's Gemini for uh, some of the examples in this video. Cool, let's get going. Right, so let's quickly get rid of the obvious ones which you've probably used yourself. Number one, generating boilerplate code. This is where you give the prompt a raw class and you ask it to generate some boilerplate code. Let's say for example, you give it a model and you say, please generate me a mapper and a view model to match. Number two, writing small functional methods that do a single thing. I found that I get way better results prompting the AI to give me small pieces of code rather than one big lump sum. Number three would be examples on how to use a class or test cases where you would use the class. Here I can take the generated code, stick it into your favorite editor, run it, make sure you get the results that you're expecting. Number four is translating code in between different languages. Let's say you've got a piece of particularly sexy code that you've written in JavaScript back in the day and you'd like to convert, convert it to Python or whatever you're using now, ChatGPT or Gemini can do that for you. Number five is debugging and troubleshooting code. Give it a section of code that isn't working the way it's supposed to, give a clear description of what the code is supposed to be doing, and then the output of what's actually happening, and then ask it to give suggestions on what could be the problem. Number six is to write, get it to write unit tests for you. I find unit tests to be exceptionally tedious and boring to write, however, massively essential. When prompting to get it to write unit tests, you want to make sure you mention the name of the testing framework you want to use. Also specify how you want your methods to be named. I normally go with that three approach where you first portion is the method the name of the method to be tested the, the followed by the test condition followed by the expected outcome number seven is example code this is really good if you are doing presentations or showing team members how to do a particular thing rather than dig through your own code base for an example of where you use that approach or that design pattern you could quickly ask the AI to generate you some code that illustrates that specific topic um, really good for presentations and good for YouTube videos. It gives me an opportunity not to have to share my own awful code. Number eight is regular expressions. Um, anyone who's trying to write their own regular expressions is either insane or a There's tons of tools out there already that will work out your regular expressions. I've just found this particularly easy. So here you'll want to ask it for the pattern, specify a list of rules for the pattern, give it a small set of test data, and ask it to give you some code to actually test the pattern. Once you run it, the chances are you'll find it'll missed a couple of things. Give it a new prompt to include the rule that you might have missed or that you didn't prompt it correctly for in the first place and keep doing this until you get the, the output you want. Number nine is logging. This is another tedious thing to add yourself, especially if you have a large code set. It's very easy to ask Gemini just to add a line to the beginning or end of every single method to say output the name of the method and the parameters that were used um, can save you loads of time. Number 10 is refactoring code. So while this is an obvious one, um, the important thing here is to be specific about what you want to be refactored. You could uh, include in your prompt that you want it to be refactored for conciseness of code or you want it to be refactored for readability um, and you can mention specific formatting options. Another good way to use this is if you are learning a pattern or perhaps one of the solid prim principles you can ask the AI to refactor code specifically for that principle or pattern you are looking for and you can see how it's adjusted your own code in the right way to follow that pattern and then learn, get some insights on the right ways and wrong ways to use that particular pattern or principle that you are trying to apply. The other refactoring options are endless. Um, you could get it to refactor the code and take out all the um, annoying comments that somebody else has added to the code base. I speak about this in one of my previous videos, how you shouldn't write comments. You can check it out if you're, you're interested. I'll, 
I'll add the link to the description. This refactoring works great for legacy code as well. You can give Gemini a bunch of code and prompt it to rewrite the code targeting a specific version of .NET. Get it to use uh, C Sharp 9, for example. Number 11 is creating API documentation. You can give it a controller and say, give me the documentation for this, and it'll generate all that boring stuff. Likewise, if you prefer something in Markdown, you can give it any sort of class and say, please give me some documentation in Markdown format that you can provide to your team, stick it in Notion, put it in your wiki, wherever you prefer. Number 12 is writing technical blog posts. Um, while I don't do this myself, I thought I'd mention it because I know there's a lot of people out there still using AI for this. Number 13 is to generate explanations. This is so useful in the scenario where you have a, a, lot, of, a lot of code which has been awkwardly written and you can't be bothered or don't have the time to figure out how it works. Just paste it in your AI tool and prompt for the AI to give you an explanation of how the code works or what it does, or even just to summarize the key points and methods, methods, classes involved in that code base. Number 14 is pull request reviews. So while I don't think that this should be replacing human beings in reviewing code, not at all, it can certainly help highlight things that you may have missed and speed up your reviewing process. The important thing to know when doing the prompts here is to ask or tell the AI of to assume the role of someone reviewing the code. Also, it is important to specify the level of developer that submitted the code. You'll find you'll get very different results if you tell the AI that the code was written by a junior or if the code was written by a grandmaster of programming. Number 15 is generating data sets based on screenshots. I found this particularly useful if I'm remoted into some sort of server and I need to take a quick screenshot of what the data looks like temporarily. Um, it's, it's great to be able to upload the image and ask it to yeah, generate it in a table table format that you can copy and paste into whatever, you, however you need to use it. Be aware this is, can be pretty unreliable. I wouldn't do this for anything sort of super critical, um, but uh, the paid versions of these AI tools do this a lot better, and I'm sure this is just gonna get better as the technology improves. Number 16 is just generating random dummy data. Um, here you want to give the AI, the structure that you want the data to be in. That can be the schema of a database table or of JSON structure. Uh, you can specify how much data you want and you can even get it to um, write a script for you to insert it into that specific table. So those are some of the ways I use AI. Please let me know in the comments down below if there's ones that you use that I may have missed. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you again in the next video.